Good everyone, I'm going to do this today. It's a review on the Stridsvagen M38, the second reserve, and the one that I said was actually the worst out of the two, and that's still my assessment. But that doesn't mean this thing is bad. So, the Stridsvagen M38 is one of the two reserve tanks that you get access to, and, well, as I said in the M31 review, I prefer the M31 due to that reverse rate, the extra armor on the rear, etc, etc. But the M38 does have a couple of tricks up its sleeve. So the M38 carries the same 37mm as the M31, and I I'm just going to call them M38-1, M38, because I can't be bothered to say Stridsvagen every time. But... This is still a good reserve tank, and there are a couple of tricks to make this thing work. So the M38, like the M31, and I forgot to say this in the M31 review, can actually side scrape pretty well. Now, for those of you that don't play World of Tanks, because yes, I do actually play it, just very freaking rarely, um, I bet you're probably wondering, what is side scraping? Well, if we use the M31, for example, a typical example of side scraping would be presenting your side armor, but not your turret or your frontal hull. You would typically reverse out of a corner and you'd be able to angle your armor effectively to bait a shot. These two tanks seem to be very good at doing that. However, the M38 does have a weak spot right here, but if you keep it towards the rear, this, even though it's only 13mm, and even the 5mm could protect you sometimes, it's still pretty solid. You've just got to watch this area here where the driver's hat, or the driver's area overlaps, because otherwise you will lose your gunner, and that's kind of taking the point away. When you're not, when you're not side scraping though, my recommendation is to angle the tank to this side. Now, some people might say, oh, they'll just shoot here. And yes, there is that. But if they go for the hull, which I have had a couple of situations, they're actually going to hit the gearbox, unless they don't aim directly for the top. Which is actually pretty well angled, and may just resist some of the lower caliber guns that you might see at this BR. Specifically the French, because I met a couple of French tanks in my second game of the M38, which was the game that got it spaded. Although I'm going to be showing you the very first game. And yeah, there are a couple of areas where the armor is either completely flat, such as this, what appears to be, pretended to be a headlight or something, or like a vent for the driver. There are, the t well there's the turret that's pretty flat and very easy to penetrate, obviously the gun is obviously right behind that. And if we just look, you can easily get overmatched on your turret, which even though that was just the AP round, if we go to the APHE round, or the ABBC round, it will penetrate and hit the gunner square in the face, as well as take out the turret drive, so that's not very useful is it so you've got to watch the turret on this one the m31 seems to cope with it a little bit better because obviously the armor is a bit more thicker but the m38 is one to be more careful in however you can be aggressive in certain situations now this tank is very weird with its gearbox it has a 28.7 mile an hour top speed but only three gears now to some of you that may seem pretty normal but the first gear in this tank is what I like to call a long gear, where essentially the tank can go in first gear or stay in a certain gear a long time before it needs to change up or change down. Another example of a long gear would be the T3485 with its 5-speed transmission. It hits 5th gear at about 23 miles an hour and has to go all the way up to about 34, so it takes it quite a while. In the Stritzwagen's case, it really does have a strong first gear for going up hills, but when you're nice and level, it does take quite a bit of time for the tank to accelerate. Just bear that in mind. And if we look at the horsepower differences and the weight differences, the M31 actually has the better engine and horsepower per ton, so you can sort of see where I'm coming from in this regard. But otherwise, both tanks are pretty much exactly the same. So the M31 is down here. Obviously, I haven't finished like, getting the skins on it yet. But the M38 I actually did better in, because obviously I was being a bit more aggressive with it, and not only that, my first game in the M31 wasn't exactly spectacular. But the M38 I tended to get better results in, doing my advice, like side scraping, um, angle in the front hull, stuff like that. 
Now, obviously, you're going to see an instance where a player tries to overmatch my turret, but fails due to the armor piercing round. As I said before, the armor piercing round is very poor, and obviously, it it really does require work. And I just realized, why did I say second game, or first game in the tank? I mean, the second game, because obviously, it's I did take it out at the end of the M31 spade battle. So, I, I count it as the second battle, but in my opinion, it's the first, because I don't really do much in the first one in this tank. But yeah, that's not it. Um... I really do have to admit, this tank is a good support tank. It can really work with its team, it can support its team well, and it can easily keep up with its team, albeit not in first gear. Now, obviously, the long gear is not a huge detriment to the vehicle. I'll be brutally honest, the detrimental effect would most likely occur on a downhill, because obviously we know how Gaijin is for their modeling of drivers and stuff, but... You can sort of see where I'm coming from on the long gear, sort of, part. So, as you can tell in this game, I have the stock round. Unfortunately, I did not get enough armor, well, reputation points, or RP, or research points. Obviously, the amount of games that use the different terms for it is unbelievable. But, I didn't have enough in the small contribution that I did in the first game of this tank, or the quotation marks first because I didn't really do much, killed one tank, that was it. But I didn't get enough to get the armor piercing ballistic capped, which again, on this tank, solid round. Really like it. I did have one instant well the only time I died in this tank was um in the second game which got it spaded. And it was by a tryhard in a LVT who was stat padding. Yeah imagine stat padding an LVT, right? The first thing he did was take out my gun, because that's all he could aim for. He, he decided, oh, I'm not going to shoot the gun, I'll give him a fair chance to fight him back. I'm going to go straight for the gun, because I'm a, I'm a try on his scumbag. Stat padders are going to be common in this thing, unfortunately. Same with the other Swedish tanks, because they just want to kill the new stuff. And I tried re retreating with my high mobility, but even that wasn't quick enough. But don't worry, I came back in Icobis and cleaned up his M3 GMC after he died and respawned. So, that's always nice, isn't it? Icobis J&A is actually really effective in Grand Forces with that armored target spell of 23mm. I'm not even joking, give it a try. Like, you, you're going to have a lot of fun with that. So at this point, I was keeping an eye out on that truck. Because a lot of people tend to come, well, as we British call it, a lorry. Because, well, logic. Um... And, yeah. So, there you can see a Stritzwagen M31. Now, I already know I'm outmatched, just by the looking of his tank. And here you can see my side scraping effect. I'm just going to pause it here, just to point out what I'm doing. So, you can see, I'm presenting the rear armor, but not the weak spot, at such an angle where his 37mm will be insufficient to penetrate. This is side scraping in its finest. There you can see he goes for the turret to try and overmatch it, but he, he doesn't really, and even then he'd only get the... That's a commander on that side. Now this is only a three crew vehicle, and its armor is about half as good as the M31. However, you can still make that work, and I was trying to... There's a forklift on the left hand side. It shows as being destroyed in the replay. It's not destroyed, it's still there. I tried to shoot the forklift there. But as you can see, I'm baiting this enemy tank for my teammate, and my teammate is about to kill him. And obviously, I'm reversing out to try and get a shot, lining up on his turret, but teammate gets him, and, well, I didn't get anything out of it, but a lot of spawn points because side scraping. Side scraping is a lot of... A, a lot of... Well, is a tactic that not many players know, and I want to encourage that. I want people to learn from it, because you never know, you might use it against me someday. And side scraping is really important to get this tank and the M31 working even better in skilled hands. In skilled hands, these tanks will give a very hard time to players that at least, well, even some try-hard in players who have never met these vehicles before might just struggle because of that. Because they may think, huh, easy penetration. Not always. So at that point, I actually had to go AFK because I thought the bloody door was going off. Because, well, 
postman might intervene for all I know. And I figured, okay, let's get let's get over and let's see what I can do. So at this moment, my team is doing a bit of a dirty tactic, and I uh, I'm not proud of the thing that they did because I did kind of support in a way, but obviously I meant went to move to the B point after a couple of minutes. I should have done it, to be brutally honest, but I do get a flank on this M39, which is the premium one. And it's better in every way than the M38. First kill. Yes, the M39 is better than this tank in every single way. Armor, mobility is about the same. The gun is pretty much, well, it is the same, and obviously you get it spaded, so you don't have to worry about the stock AP grind. Went for the shot there, but unfortunately just missed the driver's visor. And if I'd have gotten the driver's visor, it's very likely I would have killed that tank in that shot. But even so. So at this point, three M31s and obviously myself and the M38 are moving up to support the team. In You could class this as spawn rushing, and I don't feel proud about this one. And that's the thing, like, I, I didn't think at the time, because obviously I wanted this tank on my left dead. I didn't know if he was going to come around and bite me in the arse, so I wanted him dealt with before I went to go and support on the B point, which is a fair assumption. But I'm not proud of this one, as you can, as you can probably tell, I'm not proud of this one. So obviously I thought, if I just sit here, and here you can see the engine power really limiting this tank. And what I didn't know is that the little shit has just driven out from right behind that faction, or that small warehouse there. And is currently about to kill my teammate. Well, I'm backing up as hard as I can. This tank does not have a great reverse rate. I put a shot in and I don't really do anything because of all the armor piercing around is crap. But, turret ring shot after my teammate dealt with his gunner. Pretty good shot placement and that's gets me my second kill. Like I say, I'm not proud of what I did there. I should have continued on to the B point. Obviously this this guy here in the M38 he's just killed a teammate. So I think, right, I want this guy dead before I move on. And well shot placement is really important with this armor piercing round. Third kill. And before anyone says I'm cherry picking, trust me, I'm not. I'm not cherry picking. If I wanted to cherry pick, I'd go out and deliberately get a shit game because I've just had good games in this tank. It's just and and the other tank, M30 and the M31. And at this point, this is a very lucky shot. Out of all the shots, it had to hit the transmission. And here's a perfect example of guided hitboxing. I was aiming for the turret and it hit the shipping container. Yet on my screen, which is not what the replay is showing it would have hit the loader square in the face, so I wouldn't have had to have wasted three shots, but I carry 60 in these tanks, so it's no big deal. Kill number four. And here you can see where the horsepower really does limit this tank. Remember, it's only 142, roughly. It really does limit the tank, and obviously I'm trying to get through these walls, and I'm actually having to steer around that wall. It shows destroyed, but it's not destroyed in the actual gameplay. Obviously, the live gameplay, if you were to actually see that, but obviously, I do my spread reviews via replay. It's just, it's just easier. But yeah, it's just, it's just one of those tanks that it has its quirks and it has its good characteristics. Obviously, C is being capped, which I swear it used to be the A point. I've swapped it around, but you can see what I mean by the mobility. These Swedish tanks feel to me like they are slightly beefed up stewards. Like, they've got a bit better armor in some places and a bit worse armor in some places. But they seem like beefed up stewards. And obviously with the APC, or APBC, sorry, that's a fair assessment. So obviously I'm moving up here and obviously I want to see what's on the C point. Obviously it's just been capped. And there you can see how much speed I lost there. I lost about 7 miles an hour in total, obviously, ramming through that bollard there and then doing a slight turn. It really does lose its speed because it's only an 8, I think it's an 8.8 .8 ton tank and it only has about 140 horsepower. So at this point I'm saying to a teammate just down here who lost his engine, I need you here. But obviously he was repairing his engine so 
I was, I was waiting for him to come in and give me a hand. So at this point, I spot the M31. Obviously, I didn't know what it was at the time. I just knew it was a Swedish tank. I couldn't exactly identify from the rear. Because it could be either the M38 or the M31. And... So I just saw it out my ear then. I had something in my ear. But, um... Pretty much, I thought, right, I'll wait for my teammate to move up. I'll see what I can get in first. And the guy doesn't actually see us. So I put a shot in, take out the gunner, which should have killed the machine, like the, the loader at least. Take out the gunner through the driver's visor, and I go for the weak spot on the front machine gun port. Although the shell went high. I don't know how it went high, because I aimed specifically for that machine gun port, but whatever. Gets the job done. Kill number five, and that is the last of my kills. And we finish up with a lovely base cap. Well, capture point cap. And I even put in chat, this stock APBC really requires shot placement. And the worst part is, folks, the other tanks that have the 37 stock grind with it. And I don't think the APHE is until, or the APBC is until later. But yeah, solid tank. Once again, the M38 is still worse than the M31, but they are still solid vehicles. I'm not saying either one should not be used or should be used. All I'm saying is that the M31 will probably do you better. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the M38. Like I say, it's a good tank. It's just, I prefer the M31 to have a reverse rate. Enables it to get out of situations that this tank cannot. But anyway, I'll see you all on the next one.